did the <laughs> I did the nasty which not too many people do which is uh, bailing over the top from as high as I go and then bailing downhill for quite a while and then uh, to get to where I'm curious of but it means you got to go back straight up to get home <laughs> not too many people like doing that move but I force myself to do it quite commonly the check out these pants man oh it pisses me off in a lot of my videos I think up to like even five or six years ago I had the same hunting pants this so-called no tear pant I think in Columbia made it loved them 35 bucks I wore the shit out of them guiding for three months straight running around these mountains for another what October uh, November September, never two months 60 days straight and then during the off season never tore them just the, the stitching in the crotch came out and these suckers just tore them again like nothing they don't quite feel the same either it's like obviously they cheaped out they're getting less quality as usual again right kind of sucks but I refuse to buy the big brand name stuff because I'm just not the guy that's going to spend $2,500 on clothing to go outside. It's not going to happen. You dress, use your common sense. For me, anyway, I got a hell of a lot of other things I can spell a couple, spend a couple grand on than a than a jacket that is ultimately made out of li nylon or nylon or rubber. Right? It's no special expensive material that came from Mars. But anyway. Before I start ranting about that shit, obviously it's fresh in my mind, just tore my pants. <sighs> okay. Whew, that was a good little jump straight down. But well, now, but when I, once I get going, I'm going to go down this rock slide a little more and hang a left. And I'm going to traverse across the whole side of this mountain to get to where I'm going and see if I can find what I'm looking for, which I'll share on a hunting video, possibly. But anyway, time to stop. Mosquitoes are thicker than thick, and I got so much bug dope on me, I'll probably die within 24 hours <laughs> from poison. Anyway, listen to this. Hi, Steve. I'm going to use as few words as possible to tell you what I understand is going on in these creatures. All right. Firstly, the ones running around in the bush. I'm a bit hazy on them. I don't get told everything, so I'm going to go with what the texts say about them or what I've been told previously. They're human hybrids. They're hunted by the elite because the pure ones either don't want them around or want their numbers controlled. I've spoken to Daddy about this in the past, but he didn't seem to give a shit about them. He's quite unfeeling on some topics, and there is, and this is one of them. He said it amused them how desperate ours they were, and if they kept out of sight and didn't make a nuisance of themselves, they left them alone. Daddy and his crowd don't live in the bush. They live in the elaborate underground liars with humans. Humans are on the upper levels, and they're non and they're on the lower levels. These humans aren't part of our world, but they can enter if they please. And some of them are what you might call ambassadors. Overseers is probably a better term. The Bible calls them angels. They don't have wings, but just like angels in the Bible don't. If you saw one, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know he was different. He might talk to you to amuse himself, if he could be bothered. I'm not saying that about you in particular. Anybody they might bang into. These guys are very, very old. They look like they're 18, but they're as old as the hills. They drink a tonic that keeps them young, and they have an arrogant demeanor. The human elite on this planet are their lackeys. They have promised them a seat in the table if they do as they're told, which is what you see them doing, keeping us dumbed down. We are their slaves. Goods are delivered to them all the time. We sustain them. The elite have us blindly wandering into a net. There's definitely a net, and they are closing it fast. I'm a traitor. I don't think they care. It's too late in the game for them to worry. So what's the goal? Certain human women line up with the pure ones and they make the illicit elixir of youth with these women. I'm not making this shit up. There are texts all over this world that say this. I put a pile of them in my books. When they're secured their bounty, they'll come out of hiding and rule. When they've secured their bounty, they'll come out of hiding and rule. You'll wish they didn't. They say we are a hive. Sure, but us lowly humans are the worker ants, slaves, if you're lucky. Old bitches like me, they have worse plans for them. We're who the net's for. You'd think they'd want the young, but age doesn't matter to them. You're not ripe until you're nearly 60. Many reasons for that. They'll probably collect young girls, but that won't. But they won't harvest them till later. More in my books. I'm writing a book with a brief overview, text to back up what I'm saying, both ancient and modern. I think this might be a bit too much for you.
Hmm. All right, I don't even know where that came from, but it's in here. The red, but it's in here, titled The Goal. All right, well, sounds interesting. If you wanna elaborate more on those points and send it in to us to be shared, let her rip. Um, kind of vague, hopefully there's, maybe there's possibly another email from you in here somewhere. Okay, moving along. Hello, Steve. Hope this finds you amongst the thousands of emails you prompted me to write you on June 6th. You nailed it, sir. I've been struggling to come to terms with what happened to me. I want to say there are quite a few of us in the military and science community that do know what's going on. There are some that do not quite want to accept what's right in front of them. I've wanted to write in, but held back because of my job, people, and family. I'd rather save them from the disgrace, but my mind frame is changing drastically. We as humans and Earth are moving to a different part of the galaxy. We're moving into higher energy. I'm going to try and make this simple. There's some of us that are born and also develop throughout life at a different energetic vibrational state. Some call it empaths, other or many other titles. We live in a different energy than ours, even as we walk among them. I could start to bring in biblical ideology and sacred texts, but that'll take too long. I proofread this and try to sum it up as short as I can for you, Steve. Here's my encounters. It happened over a three-day period and has changed my world and they and the line of thinking I was on. I'm an early riser, sometimes I like to go outside, take a drive while the rest of the family is sleeping. I was sitting in my truck and believe it or not, was watching a video on Sasquatch. Now anyone hearing this would think I'm losing it and just might want to commit me to the loony bin. Oh well, here it goes. As I'm sitting in my truck, something catches my eye to the left of me. I look out the window and I see yellow-like sparks, as if they were something coming off the old sparklers we used to use as kids. It then was making a twirling motion and went towards the side of my house where I have a big spruce and birch trees, as I live in beautiful Alaska, and they flourish here. This was two months ago, so we still had massive hills of snow on the side of the yards that have been plowed. It, the sparkling lights, floated towards the snow and then it happened. It formed a silhouette of a Sasquatch squatting down behind the hill in between the trees. He just sat there. I got the feeling of a male. It wasn't for sure until I saw its body. Weirdly, I felt my head get very heavy. And fuzzy sounds started in my ears like when you're on an airplane. All of a sudden, I got what would be the classic picture of Sasquatch in my mind. Then it happened. He started to stand up and actually materialized right before my eyes. My heart, my heart started pounding in my throat. I could actually hear my heart pounding in my ears. My training kicked in instantly. I zeroed down and started a breathing technique to calm myself down. I actually had a funny thought to myself, this shit is not happening right in my yard, to bring some normalcy and calmness to myself. Although, like I said, it was nearly actually 4.30 a.m. and not a single soul was awake or around. He then moved in two steps over off the snow hill and close to my close to the edge of my house. Then it happened. I could hear it clear as day in my head. Not all of us are bad. I sat there almost completely in a daze. Then the thought came to my head and I actually said out loud, well, not all of us are bad either. He then, in a half crooked smile, looked at me. No shit as God my creator, if all things as my witness, completely disappeared right before my goddamn eyes. He was not a freaking animal, Steve. This was a human, a very large man, and he had the most intense, beautiful, golden-lit eyes. He had a broad chest like a bodybuilder, and in fact, I could see his damn nipples. So not, all, so not all of his chest was covered in hair. In fact, the hair he had seemed to just be maybe a couple of inches and was on him on the same parts as we do, like how we have hair or peach fuzz on our arms, hands, and even knuckles, but not so much under our arms or even on the backs of our knees. I sat there, Steve, in complete awe. Then, weirdly, but it's the God honest truth, I want him to come back. I could not believe what the heck had actually happened. He was about seven and a half to eight feet tall and was split between dark hair and silver, almost as if either it was a coat changing colors like some animals do or shed due to seasons, or it was like us, Steve. He was going silver gray to, due to age. Two days later, I have the two big Labradoodles and my one boy was weirdly hyper and wanting to go back, to go out back. It was almost late midnight. We have a big yard 
as we do live a little semi in a little semi neighborhood on a pretty big lots with wood surrounding all around. So I let my doodles out and went outside. That was something so damn strange. I grew up in Utah, Steve, and anyone from there knows when a storm is coming in, there is a rotten sulfuric smell that flows over the valley and comes from the Great Salt Lake. Not here. Never here. Has there ever, has there ever been that smell in the 18 years I've lived in Alaska? It's almost the exact damn smell as back home. It was so strange. It was also foggy and misty. I kind of thought, holy shit, this is cool. It kind of gave me a comfort feeling back home. As a little one, we all used to sit on the front porch when it would storm. We'd watch the lightning storm like they were a show. It was so damn cool. I love that about back home. And then it happened. Along my fence, I saw a bar, like a rod of light that was three feet tall and a little orange goldish hue like the sparks I saw two months, two mornings ago. It jumped along my fence line three times, coming from the trees towards my house, then three more times along my house towards me. I was absolutely absolutely dumb ass founded at what I was watching. Then it happened. As it came towards me along the side of the house, it went behind me. Naturally, I went to turn around and see where the hell it went. I was stopped, as if there was a human, a huge big human directly behind me, like in a crowded mall or movie theater. Like when you bump into someone as you go to turn around, not knowing they're directly behind you, and you're stopped in your track. I was dead stopped in my tracks. I was stunned. Then I was starting to hear ringing in my ears so loud and my head started to get heavy. My head felt like it had a weight on it. Then my mind was clouding up or it was like calming where all your thoughts and mind chatter was gone and stopped. I started to think, where the hell are my dogs? Then I looked and they were calmly laying down in the yard. What the hell? They never do that. Then I thought to myself, what the F is behind me? I went to turn around again with total ease. I sat there so stunned I couldn't believe what the hell is happening. I thought to myself, what the F just happened? Then I replayed it as it all completely happened so quickly, maybe a minute and 30 seconds at most. As I watched the rod light thing bounce, I felt like almost a child, like a happiness feeling, playful like, and yet I felt like it was almost, I was almost in a trance. Then a thought came in my head. It was not me doing this. A picture of other morning popped in my head of the Sasquatch and then a picture of a big one single spark, like the sparklers from the other morning, but one single one. Then a picture of a big blackish brown hand with hair on the outside that was making a waving motion, as if someone were waving hi to another friend or so. I could see the wrinkles in this hand. It was huge, black, and thick. I then sat there in a dumb haze. I finally snapped out of it, and I believe it or not, that weird rancid sulfur smell started disappearing as well the fog started to get higher and disintegrate. Steve, I wonder if that smell comes when there is a transfer of dimension or plane. Here's the weird part. As I walk into our house, my spouse says to me, Are you okay? I said, Yeah, why? He said, You look like you almost stumbled over yourself or tripped over air on the porch, honey. I thought to myself, Holy shit, he saw that? He said the dogs wake him every few minutes before he walked into the kitchen to grab some water. At that very moment, Steve, I was trying to process what the F just happened. I swear to God, that bouncing rod of light was clear as the trees and the fence in my yard. If anyone else was outside, they surely would have seen it. It was not in my head or my imagination. The rest of the night I couldn't sleep. I was so dumbfounded and in total shock at what I just witnessed. That is, this is where I started to realize and have this burning thought, just because we don't have a phone, a camera, or maybe not a witness, we should never be disregarded. We as humans need to start understanding the true golden honest power of another one's words. At this moment, I realized how others may have felt, or the most of the people, or most of the people that have been emailed into, and were ridiculed, laughed at, or even beaten as a kid because they were just telling their honest to God truth about their experience. What a goddamn shame! The next day, I got up as early as usual, but headed on out to the base a little early. It's about an hour, and some journey of a drive, and boy, did it leave me with some damn burning questions. Steve, I'll tell you. We have, I'll just say, some areas here in Alaska that are guarded, and I mean heavily guarded, that are rural and only accessible by going through guarded gates and passes. There are things that have popped up on video and anomalies that have become the norm here. I need to talk to someone I, I trusted, and that could help me. Here's what the wisest person I know said to me. Blank my name. 
I know that many are not accepting what is going on on the planet right now. There seems to almost be a split in our community. Some are screaming from the mountaintops that we need to let the people, the public, civilians know and aware of the changes. Otherwise, others are being naive and ignorant about it. Our planet, as well as humans, are moving into a higher energy slash vibrational status in our galaxy. There are changes coming that are going to mind boggle. To people, some are going to be affected in a bad way, hence why we're having such a massive upchart in suicides and or a good, honest, hardworking people actually losing their minds. You have seen such an upchuck in the mental community and some psychologists are talking and others in the police, gov, three-letter agencies are almost robotic and non-existent with speaking about this. I think the hardest part, sir, is we don't fully know what's going to happen or coming, but we do know as these changes are happening, whether we like it or not, should be shared with the people. It happened thousands of years ago. These are natural occurring cycles, and yes, it's going to actually get more active. There is an almost closer energy we are sharing with the Sabe. They are like other species. They're multidimensional beings. They have access to the abilities that we as humans have lost. Then he told me we should save this chat for evening dinner. Most people aren't dumb and are noticing shit, like the clouds. Many are posting about them. There are cloud formations that this race has never seen. There's also things in the clouds and even noises that have some have recorded and posted on social media. Look at the geographic charts on activity on volcanoes and earthquakes. You'll also find that if actually look at what the earthquake gov posts for the magnitudes of earthquakes is not correct. They are dumbing them down as well, not posting all that are happening. Steve, what are you doing is selfless work, helping those that cannot help themselves. I mean, there's many, I mean many good people that are waking, walking around, scratching their heads because they know something is off. Yet I believe that many feel alone and are overwhelmed at the non-existence of help that we always have looked to the government or a news, etc. for answers. We as the good people put our trust in them all these years, and now everything is coming to light. Even the evil side of some, or most of some of these disgusting politicians. Don't get me started on that. That, my friend, is rant that'll drag out too long. Steve, I can tell you for a fact, our military is on hold. And yes, we've been in over... And yes, we've been in an over-prep from change, but this is all I can say. There's many people out there on social media leaking out little signs. And what you are doing, sir, is the biggest of them all. Giving the voice back to the people. That, my friend, is where we are headed. We need to stick together, come together, and get over all the little petty shit and realize we just might need each other a lot more than we think. And to the ranchers that post and yell in comments, just so you know, all you are doing is showing the rest of the world your inner fear issues and weaknesses. God, seriously, fighting or yelling behind a screen. What the hell have some become? Steve, I'll write you back if anything else comes of these experiences, but I know for a fact I'm not alone, and there will be many more amazing experiences starting to happen. Sadly, it can be as scary and even damning for some souls. Sabe are spiritual beings. They live on a different plane than us, but the veil is thinning, my friend. There are some that have had... There are some that have not had good intentions, as well as some pretty messed up black rogue military groups that have taken a horrible step in genetics and wrongdoing. There also is a group that is, was formed to protect these beings as well as us, and all I can say about that is these groups who I've only heard about and yet to meet are from a different place. They only help when needed. That is above my pay grade, but, for, but not for long. Things are changing, and they are changing drastically. The one thing I tell everyone is enjoy the earth. Go outside, get in nature, sit and breathe the fresh air. Talk to her as if she was alive just like we are. It'll help ground you and help accept these beautiful changes coming. It's definitely nothing to fear. Only be excited about, and this is where we need to come together and share so everyone knows we are not alone on this beautiful planet. Many of us want answers and think the best accurate ones come from the elders and the history of the Hopi and the First Nation people. Thanks, my friend, and yes, you said, Steve, Mr. Macaroni's your blood brother. They are, and come in our lives for a reason. It's a bond that can't be described, but given to us like contract we had before we even came on this earth. They help us through so much and give us friendship and a bond that can't come from anything else. They know us on a deep level that we share with them. You'll definitely be with them again and on a much more beautiful plane, Steve. When you think about it, it's almost disgust that comes to mind 
thinking of what humans have done over the centuries and how we've treated or annihilated each other. What a total sickest, disgusting thing we've done, allowing another to be above us and dictate what we do. It's evil sorcery, black magic, not magic, mindfuck. It was never supposed to be that, that we. It was, it was never supposed to be that way. Hopefully we can correct that this time around. Check out the cycles of time, the cycles of Earth, and the movement in which our planets are. There's a lot no and secrets there. Your friend. P.S. Steve, I've heard you mention having a roundtable sit-down conversation. Man, I would love to be part of that if there's ever an offer. Thank you for all you do, Steve. If you ever venture upwards to me here in the interior of Alaska, since we're neighbors, I'd love to take you up to our cabin and do some hiding on a riverboat ride and campfire sit back with a beer. The offer is fully open. Keep up this damn good fight. They hate it, Steve, because it's the truth straight from the people's mouths and it's flooding knowledge to everyone on levels that are starting, startling. It's striking up memories and bringing it to people in a calm, easy setting. Wow, right? Who thought we could fight back like this. It kind of gives me a good laugh. We're opening up to all this to the fact that we are better together, not apart. Listen to your intuition. It's our sovereign God spark right among many other abilities they've tried to take away. All right. What a great email that was. What a freaking great share. Um, all right. Uh, what do I say to this one? Uh, the majority of that email makes absolute, absolute sense to me, especially the part about giving the people a voice, right? And what we become and us allowing other human beings to so-called be above us. I can assure you I've never done that in my life. But uh, yeah, the roundtable of knowledge, uh, that will probably be a couple months out. I, can't get, I won't be able to get that going until we I take possession of the new place less than a month. And uh, then we've got a lot of things to do in that place. Um, but the man cave is definitely on the priority list and getting that corner set up into that studio and we're going to have some very intelligent people on board and we're going to talk and we're going to talk live and nobody's going to stop us can't wait to do that and I'll definitely have you on for sure as far as going up to Alaska I love Alaska <laughs> I've gone I've, I've actually flown to Alaska by myself with all my shit and uh, rented a car and parked and hiked into the mountains up there a few times in the past um, if I could ever encourage you, anybody to go see absolute crazy beauty, it's without a doubt Alaska. I mean, basically everywhere on the planet is mind-boggling beautiful, right? And uh, I admit it, obviously where I live, very lucky, the sights we can see. But I'll tell you what, Alaska, whew, if I had to pick a state to live in, I don't know what I would do. I mean, Alaska, I would absolutely love to live there. Texas is definitely high in the list, Alabama, uh, just because of the friends I've had and experiences there. But Alaska's right up there. Um, there are changes coming. There's some. There's something's coming. Something's up in the air, isn't there? Something is up. Something's been up for a while. Uh, you touched on the um, psychological aspects of the population lately. I told everybody previously we spoke to some police officers, and they were saying how. Uh, suicides have absolutely skyrocketed just in our our community in the sea of sky suicides have gone absolutely bonkers and not just with the ment with the the mentally ill people um, or the uh, the drug addiction the addicted people but with everybody that was directly from the first responders that are dealing with these people meanwhile the government uh, denies it and says the numbers are still stable and the same as they always have been which is another blatant lie but anyway, um, moving along. I'm going to start hiking. i got to get around that corner. And once I get to the farthest point that I'm venturing today, then I will, I'll stop again, and I'm going to crank out uh, a bunch more shares as well as I go about seeking out what I'm seeking out today for me. And if anybody's curious, it's actually this huge buck that I've been watching for about five years and videotaping them. And it's not what was previously considered my target buck than I was after but the buck that I've nicknamed number two and uh, I've watched him I've watched where he's gone in winter and I've watched the trails he's he's excuse me ran up and um, I just had this one hunch these this cliffed out face of this big mountain here where I think I might be able to go and find his antlers laying under a big fir tree possibly but it's also it's just a fun thing for me to do and it's a great 
activity to do to keep me in shape and keep me healthy and keep me grounded by getting me out in the, the big mature timber where nobody goes. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people, obviously a lot of people have emailed in, they do not go in the woods anymore. They can't after what they've seen, what they experienced with these beings. Um, and a lot of people ask me how I do it. And to be honest, I haven't a clue. You know, I find sometimes when I'm at home and I'm reading these experiences of people or I'm actually listening to interviews of other people online, it scares the shit out of me, right? It takes me back to when that thing was above me, looking at me intentionally, knew I was coming. And I don't know how I overcame it, but I, I will think about where I go the night before. When I'm at home is when I'm the most, when I'll get the most anxiety about where I go alone. But once I'm doing it, I'm absolutely calm, business as usual, no problem. You know, it's very rarely as I get, is when I get nervous and I have to leave. I think we've caught that in a video maybe twice now, possibly. Out of all the times, you got to look at look at all the thumbnail pictures. Just go over all the, the the video list I have on the YouTube channel and take a look at the thumbnail photos. All the different places I go, which is obviously hundreds, and I'm by myself 99.9% .9 of the time. And I can assure you right now, I'm far from the road. I'm in big timbers, never been logged. I'm within, uh, I think I'm within a quarter mile of where I've found footprints from these things. They're here. I don't, I don't feel any pressure right now. I don't feel any presence around me right now. Um, I would bet my life on the fact they have probably stood right where I'm sitting right now. But do I feel any nervousness? I don't. I don't know why I don't. I don't. I feel an absolute calm. I have enth enthusiasm. It's almost as soon as I bail off the, the road and into the big timber, I just it just gets calming for me. No hesitation. I don't know why. I don't I haven't a clue, to be honest. I haven't a clue. That is what it is, and I'm going with it. So uh but anyways, thank you so much for that share. Please do share more. Please share more with the people. Alright? Um, everybody's interested. It's helping many. And uh, the puzzle pieces are steadily flowing in and they're filling holes in people's puzzles. And uh, again, if you possibly missed me saying before, this channel, this video, and all the other ones aren't meant to entertain anyone. All right? These videos are 100% dedicated to every single person on the globe who has had these terrifying experiences and didn't ask for it. That's what this is for. Okay? Uh, the door is wide open to the world. Come on in, sit down, pull up a stump, crack a beer, and listen and learn. Or add what you got. Uh, but if this makes you miserable and angry and you are absolutely intent, intent on me being the bad guy, um, you're more than likely the bad apple and you need to, to kind of leave. All right? There's nothing here for you. Anyway, before I keep babbling, burning up all the juice and the batteries, all my stuff, i got to get going. I'm going to get downhill across this uh, rock slide and see if I can pick up a trail on the other side. And then I'm eventually going to wrap around the top of this mountain all the way back up and over, get back to that deactivated old road. And then uh, and then I'm going to um, make it back to the truck and get out of here. And then, uh, like shitty deals, I forgot my lunch. Forgot my lunch. Can you believe that? A fully loaded, awesome lunch, all ready to go in the fridge. Out the door, left without it. What a dumbass.